Y'all, it's about to be one of them nights. I don't even, it's about to be one of them nights. <laughs> Hit the like button as the intro plays because we got a lot to get into. We got a hell of a lot to get into. Could somebody please make it make sense? Make it make sense to me in Make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense, make sense. Make it make sense. You know what was up. Look at me, what did I say? No. Come here. Look at me. Hey, look at me. What? I, no. Y'all, I don't even know how we got here. Sorry if I'm being a little bit loud tonight. I've been on an airplane four times in the last two weeks, and now, like, I can't really hear out of one ear. So if I get loud, y'all can just let me know. But Carl Winslow, <laughs> we're not even going to start with him. <laughs> we're not going to start with Carl. Let's start with something serious. So shout out to Art of the Dialogue. They got an interview with a member of the band, the original making the band, and the stuff that he said is actually chilling. So we're going to start there. Um, if you don't remember the band, it was before Danny DeCane and before Day 26. It was these guys. They were fighting. You know, low-key, Diddy was, like, in my opinion, pimping out MTV. He had these people in his home so that he could charge MTV rent. Dude is pretty shrewd when it comes to making money. All of the times you saw Diddy's cars in his artist music videos, he was charging them for that. But this is what Freddie P had to say. And remember Little Rod's lawsuit or his complaint and his allegations about how Diddy allegedly intimidated him. Listen to what Freddie P had to say. Right on. And, and what's so crazy is, if a nigga threaten you like this, right? You laugh at a nigga. I mean, get your funny act from by me, boy. Shoot you, you know what I'm saying? This nigga threaten you, it hit different. You hear what I'm saying? Like, and I'm a gangster. Like, I done been in, in real, real, I done seen it. I ain't got to talk about him. They'll tell you ain't nothing he can show me that I ain't seen. You get what I'm saying? So when he said this to me, uh, it hit a nerve. It was like, it was on some shit. Like, um, one day I woke up, I was in the mood. I'm in the studio, I'm snapping, whatever. I don't want to be spoiled. You know, when you're around a bunch of goofies, you're a street nigga. Sometimes you don't want to be around the nerves. Sometimes the nerves irritate you. So, so I'm in that bitch. I'm just, I'm just frustrated with a lot of shit that's going on. Anyway, we get in a situation. He go, to, we in front of everybody. Nick like, um, he was like, man, money, um, man, what you think you bad or something? He was like, Nick, I buy every house on your block. Shut every light off on that bitch. And when you come out, every time you come out, that bitch will get popped. So when another Nick tells you some shit like that, you like, get your animated ass out of here, goofy ass. You feel what I'm saying? When he tells you some shit like that, you go to pitching him purchasing every house. You go to pitching every light on the block going off. And that shit signs me. And for you to make that, people ask why I left the So. Are y'all hearing this? If you remember, Little Rod's complaint specifically said Diddy had told him, I will, I will eat your face off. Um, he's alleged that Diddy told him that he got away with pow pow on that woman in the face in the shine incident. If you take Little Rod's complaint and you take what Freddie P just said about the way that Diddy allegedly flippantly threatens people is sinister and is scarier than this pick. Now, I'm not going to lie. One of the straight shooters, she did say that after I showed this pick, she kind of thought Diddy was cute. Now, I ain't seen her around anymore since then, but I know for most people, it's some scary shit. <laughs> <laughs> Brenda, favorite movie, scary movie too. Brenda was trying to warn us way back when. Sean had a pool party this summer. Sean, 
you know, Puff Daddy. Anyway, everybody was drinking Cristal champagne. Then it started to get wild when people were getting freaky in the pool and stuff. She was trying to tell us way back then what was going down. <laughs> Low-key, scary movie is going to be part of the theme of the night. <laughs> it's one of my favorite movies. And Brenda is one of my favorite actresses. That's not her name, but you know what I mean. Regina uh, is one of my favorite actresses. <laughs> <laughs> not a jump scare y'all we got about 1500 in the chat definitely hit the like button <laughs> brenda did say it first <laughs> okay sorry i told y'all i was gonna get a little messy but let's get back to the seriousness the band like that's why i left the band like that's why i didn't do the age of like we got into that my next time i got the chance to go home because i could i had to you know your gangsters like you know when you got your gun on you got to play it off sometime so i had to play it off i find i, I try to man listen i don't even want to talk it's because like, i don't know statute limitations and stuff like that but i try to get his pussy you feel what i'm saying like he didn't know he was threatened he pretty i'm pretty sure he know now nah. you know he probably been living in miami long enough he know now who he was threatened. he know how, how i'm rocking but at that time you know what i'm saying he ain't know what my mind state was i ain't got you, but i ain't comfortable i will i will be the one to put you on the news and me you know what i'm saying that's how i felt at that time like boy you threaten me like niggas in the street don't threaten me i'm going to war with real killers and they ain't they, they ain't not there like this you niggas i know standing on business and you that's how I felt. Like, oh, I got to have you. And later on that night, I was trying to take his ass out. You feel me? Like, me and my dog, got his, his little his soul, we was in, like, a G-Wagon, and he had a little tutus. I had a little pistol on me, whatever. I had a Mac, he had whatever. And we was waiting on his pussy to come out. So we had a meeting at, at 1 o'clock that night. So I had knew in my mind that, okay, we got into this earlier that day. So my time frame was, let me get back. So from, like, 11, no, we got out to, like, 1040-something. So from, like, 1040, so we had, we had to do it, you know. Okay, y'all. Now, this, when he was talking this, it, it, very few things surprise me anymore. This surprised me. He's literally telling us how he intended to take Diddy out. And he's thinking, well, there's a statute of limitations. No, you were letting a, an alleged dangerous person know that you had a plan to take him out. Can't be the smartest thing. Cannot be the smartest diddy did threaten him but uh i might have left that little tidbit out <laughs> so <laughs> attempted blah blah <laughs> we'll do the homework whatever whatever make sure we get right back to the west side highway because it was like these little um alleys and shit. so we had to do our homework because i know you got to make sure police ain't parked and walking around and standing on the block in manhattan so my mindset was different it's dumb right now and i'm glad i didn't because i probably would have died or got a prison sentence or something like that but it's just how you have me feeling after the conversation and it's like and he said some other shit. He was like, uh, he was like, uh, ah, somebody. He was like, what? He was like, Nick, he was like, you can walk out the studio right now. Somebody just walk up and pop you. He was like, I don't want to see you die or nothing like that. But Nick in the knee or something. He was like, you gotta. He was basically like, you better control yourself. Like you better humble yourself. And I done been there. I know. Um, if you're just coming in, this is Freddie P. And what he's telling us is that Diddy threatened him allegedly, and he was thinking about basically taking Diddy out. You just never know who you're talking to. What is this? Uh, the video. No, no, no. It's it's. I I turn the speed down. Here we go. So let me let you guys kind of see what he looks like now. And again, shout out to the art of the dialogue. How it is when 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 you were Apex and you at the top with the big dog. He he got a, you know he he probably ain't, he ain't really want to do that. Our relationship was different. You get what I'm saying? Like, I was quiet. He, he respected me. He never really disrespected me. I seen him disrespect. I seen him disrespect a lot of people. I seen him talk crazy to a lot of people. He had a lot of respect for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, when we hung out, we talked about folks. Like, you know, we hung out one time. We went out to a club and he put me one to no, one on my own. You feel me? Like, um, he like, um, he bought me. I'm at the end of some couch. It's like a it's Dame Dash. There's a bunch of motherfuckers. There's like dark. It's my type of environment, but it's quiet. It's, everybody mind their own business. And it's like a horseshoe couch. And he at the top of that bitch with like eight bitches and shit. I done seen Puffy do some wild shit. I done seen Puffy like finger bitches in the club, like in front of everybody. Like, I done seen Puffy do some wild shit. I ain't never seen no man on man shit, but in my mind, I already knew what was going on around me. I just didn't know it was hard. I didn't, I didn't know it was certain nicks. And now when I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, he done got all of them. So when, I, when I'm hearing what he offer, I'm like, oh, he done got them all. When you see all these rappers out here with this money popping up mysteriously and they looking like good investors and all that, no. Nicks on that Diddy package pan. You get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, you see Nick getting houses, Nick offering 20, 30 million dollars for your butthole, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. And I can understand most of them niggas, it, pause, no diddy. I, don't, I can't understand, but I can understand most niggas, most niggas is weak. Most niggas ain't from that. You get what I'm saying? They only dare to provide. Most niggas can get drunk and get to. Okay, I'm not going to have no uh, hating on the way Freddie talk. Freddie is a Louisiana native. His dialect is very New Orleans. So, <laughs> so y'all not going to be hating on my boy in the way that he speaks. 
Uh, <laughs> he does talk fast. Um, so I, I slowed it down. <laughs> Took care of most niggas uh, without money could get slapped the fuck around in their hood. Like, without money, no nigga ever slapped me in my hood. Before, you could go ask my ops, and them niggas don't like me to this day, but they gonna tell you one thing about him. That nigga ain't nothing to be played with, boy. He gonna get in. He's not lying. We saw him actually fight on making the van. So I thought it was important for you guys to hear this because this was the more sensible, if you can believe it, Diddy story for the night. This one was the sensible one. Yeah, that was slowed down. <laughs> Y'all. Let's get into Carl Winslow. I never thought I'd say it. Um, you guys remember Shawnee Sugar Baby Loose Cannon? Well, Loose Cannon got loose lips. Um, you if you don't remember, um, I covered the story. Basically, he was alleging that Shawnee was giving him like AP watches, fifty thousand dollars a pop, um, and he was allegedly blowing out her back. And the last time she called him allegedly was two weeks before she got married to the pastor. Now, Shawnee did not sue him. Shawnee just put out um, like a Instagram post basically saying, you know, she's in love with her husband. She did not say that it was a lie. Um, I recently saw Shawnee shopping. <laughs> I went the other way. Um, but anyway, that's Luz Cannon, the little short dude that looks like a turtle um, to the left of the photo. This is what he had to say. Him and his, I guess, wife are doing a reality show and they're doing a publicity tour. So this is what he had to say about Diddy. You presented the paperwork, right? If you see the paperwork with Diddy, right? Do you see like all the shit that is, is coming out? Because I used to go to Diddy parties. And shit. Stuff, but I'm, how, how, speak shit. on that real quick. No, oh, no, he's seen no, some he, things. Baby, tell him. Tell him. No, but like I see like when Diddy fucked. Carl's Winslow. We was at the party, uh -huh. and you know we just chilling and shit like that. And at this point, I started yelling, "Not Carl!" TGIF was my thing on Fridays. It was Family Matters, and um, I think there was uh, I don't know, some with the two twins. That was my stuff when I was growing up on Friday nights. I mean, we all know that Carl Winslow or whomever played the act, whoever the actor was, he was a gay man. But this was the first I ever heard about him being anywhere affiliated with Diddy. Me, that's that my childhood when he told me to go to Diddy parties. And shit, stuff, but I'm, how, how, speak shit. on that real quick. No, oh, no, he no, sees some things, baby. Tell him. Tell him. No, but like I see, like when Diddy fucked Carl Winslow, we was at the party, uh -huh. and you know we just chilling and shit like that. And me, that's the best when he told me every, that. Everybody know me, right? Right. I'm a I'm a goofy oh, nigga. I'm funny and stuff like yeah. that. So I hear cool. niggas just wearing out some shit. I'm like, huh? Yeah. Like hearing that, I'm like, on oh, six oh, who's wearing this bitch out? Right. Nigga, I kick in the door. Poof. Kick in the door. Nigga, I seen. I looked. I seen Carl Winslow. Put yeah, his that's head the father. Up. Ain't that the six, father from, like, from Family Matters? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No way. Oh, oh, the dad. The dad. Oh, the dad. The dad. The dad. Yeah. I swear <laughs> to God, yeah, homie, baby, look. <laughs> I told y'all. <laughs> I told you this was about to get real messy real quick. <laughs> it got real messy. Now, in his real life, yes, he was a gay man, but God dang. Uh, BTS is my happy place forever. Thank you so much for gifting five memberships. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely Friday. It's definitely, I don't. Let's get back to it. And little known fact, um, Judy, the girl next to Carl, after she was let go from Family Matters, and you know Hollywood really wasn't doing her right. She actually started. Um, she started doing adult films for a while. So we got Carl allegedly with Diddy. We got Judy doing adult films, and we all know what happened to the little boy at the bottom of the screen. Y'all all know who he is. I don't even need to say his name. So many connections. So many connections, y'all. 
Uh, we got like 2,700 in the chat. Let's, I haven't been reminding you guys about the likes. Uh, definitely hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. We have a good time. Um, oh, Trav has seen her adult films. But yeah, Judy Judy turned to um, a, the adult life. Crip. So when I see, <laughs> wow. I see, I seen that, Man. and then so who who was piping? Uh, Diddy, yeah, yes. Diddy was. So when, when when I see when I seen that, cuz right, Diddy came back and he he was telling me he was like, it's nothing more enjoyable than having a man do something for some money. I'm like, cuz that shit crazy. Oh, nah, that's wild, bro. So it's like after that, it was Ooh. like like the industry is like. Wow, you know, you know, it's wild. Is, so it's wild. Men oh, like that, they feel they're right. untouchable. And the sad thing is, we know when they did the raid, they found a lot of in, uh, like um, hidden cameras in bedrooms. They mm. found, like, literally the raid they just did right. just the other day. I'm okay, honey. They found hidden cameras in the bedroom. Come so this man, room. this man probably had blackmail videos on certain politicians and people that came to his events and stuff, and thought he can get his way out of everything by having these videos. And this, that is why they wanted all the electronics because they knew he had all these hidden cameras. It's now, every, every room it was um hidden every camera. Every, every bedroom, room, fucking bedroom. bedroom. Oh, in all the house, room. in every bathrooms, everything, closets, everything. What, what you doing having? What you doing having hidden cameras there? People, people don't understand the, weird, the TVs and stuff like that. All the cameras, and, yeah. So they it is leaking like a sieve, and you guys know. I don't. I guess I do have to tell you. Orlando was also on Family Matters. And we all know what's been going on with, with Orlando. Well, Diddy, you gave me the Ooshkosh Kooshmash. You gave me the Ooshkosh Muaf. The Smoosmash. Diddy. Yeah, son. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You gave me the Ooshkosh Muaf. I love it. Mm. They took out all the, the stuff out of the TVs to get that too. Mm. It's crazy. So, so you're saying these cameras, like the cameras right here? Yes. They had them all in the, in the smart yes. TVs. Er, listen, everything records. Yeah. You know how like yeah. you you could be talking on your phone and then you go to Google and that shit pop up. Yeah. That's how that's that shit is. That's facts. That's true. That's true. And that's that's, 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 that's and I, I'm not even yeah. gonna hold you. Like so many people now. This is why a lot of celebrities probably mm -hmm. ain't saying nothing. They're very very quiet when it comes to the very Diddy quiet. situation. Because right. you know why? They've all been to his party. And they've probably all done something, yeah. whether it be Wait, drugs, on, whether it be because sexual, I've been to cuz parties. I never did none of nah, that. Nah, but shit. a lot of people have. You know, Let's keep it keep it a buck. No, that's why a lot of people are quiet. Probably like five, six. I've been and to out, a out, of and out of and out of those five or six, how many? The were first strange. one. The now the woman talking, his wife. She was a I don't know what you want to call her. Um, she wasn't effing for tracks, but she was effing for a reality show. She was screwing. Lemmy allegedly from Zeus Network, um, and that's how she got on something about real chance of love or something like that. And she was supposed to get her own. So these people are are definitely, I don't know what you want to call them, industry pass arounds. You got the man effing for watches from Shawnee, and she's effing Lemmy for reality shows. <sighs> The first one was the the worst one, and then the other ones I left early. Okay, so the worst one was Carl's we Carl Wilson. Yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah, dead. So, okay. so, so you just busting the door? You didn't care? No, because you know how me, I like to joke and play and stuff oh, like right, that. Right, so right, right. a nigga don't give a fuck. So I'm I'm just hearing like ah, ah like all oh, that shit. I'm like, oh, somebody wearing this bitch out on crib. So I go busting the door. I look up, I see Carl's win. So I'm like, oh, yeah. six so Like this is crazy. Wow. So, and, so, <laughs> but but you have to understand. I can't fix that. It's crazy, and bro. Ass nigga just get. I can't. You know, no, when I think listen, of Carl Wins, I think of the cop. I'm no, but just, yeah, but you. you, you know, have, I just can't picture that big ass nigga bent over and letting a, a feminine nigga like Diddy pound it. You know, taking the pound tail, nigga. <laughs> well, you heard the lyrics that Meek did in that one song, right? My honey posted it today on his story. Man. You know, he was like, you know, hope they forgive me what I did with, with Diddy. Come on, I what did you, hear what, that. What I did. did? Hear that. Yeah, what did yeah, you do yeah, with yeah, Diddy? Yeah. I want to oh, know. Oh, yeah, he said that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he said that. Yeah, I, I got it uh, on my thing, but you have to understand. Carl Winslow sitting somewhere talking about. So now, why am I in it? And you could have did yeah, it. See, so I get I wrong. Did it you never apologize. Right, this was not expected. I don't even have that one queued up. <laughs> I love that you know that one, though. I understand, like, you know, French Montana and stuff like that. You know, did he pinch in his booty on uh, thing? On no, camera. but on camera. But like this you is it. you can see it on on YouTube. Like, look it up. Like they he groping him on camera and all this stuff like that. I mean, he asking niggas, let me take you shopping, daddy. Like, 
as soon as a nigga say some shit like that, I'm gonna slap your shit out of oh, yeah, you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Watch nigga, fucking watch no, it's just unfortunate yeah, that a lot of men like that that use their money and their power trips to get what they want. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these women or even men felt taken advantage of and manipulated because he promised them a future. He promised them deals. He promised, look, look, look at Aubrey Orday. She, you know, she, they, they promised them the world, right. but actuality, he kept raping them. He raped them from their oh, careers, from their dignity, the from their pride, all for an up. Now she's saying that, but she was sleeping with Lemmy to get a reality show. Do I agree with her about Diddy? Absolutely, allegedly. But um, she's, she, I guess she would know because of the things that she's done in order to make it in the business. Um, We just looked at a video the other day about one of the dudes from Day 26 who had some things to say about what was expected and what he wasn't willing to do to get to certain places. We just talked about that. Um. <laughs> Y'all, I told y'all this one was going to get messy. Opportunity. Sometimes that happens. And and a lot of a lot of us, I'm going to say us, go through things in life and say, damn, I wish I didn't have to do that. Yeah. Damn, I wish I, because it's a crazy industry that we are in that it's unfortunate that you got to do certain things that you don't really want to do. Like, I'm sorry to say, even gangbangers, right? Y'all got to do certain things to feed your, feed your kids and do certain things. It just sucks that. So that was the Carl Winslow. I don't even know what to make of that, y'all. To be honest with you, so much stuff has gone on, so many allegations, so many things are turning out to be true. I don't know what's... I don't know what Diddy's type is at this point. I thought it was Asian women or Asian adjacent women, but we've heard a lot. We heard a hell of a lot. Diddy somewhere. Come it's on, true. None of it's true. None of it's true. It's BS. They made it up. They lie. That's um it's important to it's important to say that Diddy has denied all allegations. And so have Diddy's sons. Um let's move on. Because everybody's talking. Even top security bodyguards are talking so oh his type is anybody and everybody with a pulse i told y'all it was gonna get messy tonight are y'all did y'all get a drink uh y'all always be asking what i'm drinking so i'm drinking patron normally this is the mix that i use when i do my um drinks but i saw this um and I'm trying it. It's not. It's not bad. It's not as good as what I normally drink. But if somebody sees it and you want to try it, it's a little bit cheaper. It's only like four bucks. You can check it out. Not a freak off Friday. <sighs> okay, let's get to it. So this is a top security guard giving an interview. Um, here we go. Shout out to Cam Capone News. Saying it for years, bro. I've been saying it for years. Like man. These boys are weird. You feel me? Like, you will go to a party with them. And you look around like, damn, like, a lot of guys kissing each other in here, man. You feel me? What y'all do is y'all business. So you've been to a party and seen this? Oh, I've seen it firsthand, multiple times. Yeah. I've seen Dwight Howard in a pink dress, bro. What? I've seen Dwight Howard in a pink dress with two other trans ladies. Now, how Dwight's business got in this I have no idea. Now, why am I here? And you could have did it. See, so, I get it wrong. You never apologize. He boomerang talking about Diddy to Dwight Howard. Now, if Dwight Howard was in a dress and his wife is okay with him being in a dress, I don't know why a bodyguard who should have signed some form of an NDA would be disclosing something like that. We do know that Dwight Howard, I would say his dress is more like what is it like metrosexual um he definitely him and his wife both like are very experimental when it comes to the fashion that they choose to wear but i, I honestly do not know why dwight howard just got thrown into this loki i i really don't y'all the two other trans power in a pink dress with two other trans ladies in dresses they all the same height at a diddy party 
Oh. Ask about Dwight Howard in Mexico. What's up with Dwight Howard in Mexico? You know, they don't got paparazzi out there like that. You feel me? They was down there hooping. He going to the club with these same trans ladies. Nobody saying nothing. That's why he's not in the league right now. You heard about him catching a sexual assault on the little designer dude? Yep. Right. Him. Imagine you got two seven-foot-tall swole guys in dresses, cornering you in a hotel in a bedroom. You finna be scared. I've right? never heard of that. So, like, I, I distinctly remember going to a Diddy party. All the waitresses topless. They serving you everybody topless. You feel me? Like, he got uh, dancers in cages, people walking around with lions on leashes, tigers on leashes. I seen this with my own two eyes. See what I'm saying? And it was getting so weird in the party. I'm like, man, hmm. I tell the security team I'm working with, but let me sit outside in the, in the Escalade. So I go outside in the Escalade and I'm just chilling out there because, you know, bro, I got a reputation to maintain, bro, outstanding member. Like, I don't want nobody thinking that, man, they got BH with this? That was always a concern for me, bro. That was always a concern. I seen it for myself because Bobby Valentino was the person I was bodyguarding there. You see what I'm saying? He tell me, I didn't got so much pussy before. You know, pussy don't even really excite me. I'm like, what you mean? But he there. What you mean? <laughs> now, we all know Bobby Valentino is into, you know, the trans women. But uh, Megan's Mo, what, what am I reporting incorrectly? Let me know. And I'm not drunk yet. I've had like two sips. <laughs> I'll let you know when I'm drunk. Uh. Who, why do y'all think I'm drunk? Hold on, let me take this off the screen. I've had like two, three sips. I'm not drunk, but I would tell y'all if I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, fourth grade. I said, what you mean? So he got two girls with him. So I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, hold on. These might not be normal girls. Sure enough. Oh, because the now he say, man, take my girl to the bathroom. I'm like, okay. We walk into the bathroom. You feel me? She go into the men's bathroom. But that's that's not all the way crazy. Because one bathroom pack, you feel me? People might do that. You know what I'm saying? So people start swarming the door. So I step inside the bathroom though. She's standing at the urinal. Dress lifted up. I'm like, damn. Oh, man. Okay, that's how they coming? All right. So, you know, I'm going to tell, tell everybody this. If you at a celebrity party, and the white guys come in like they was on Twilight, look like vampires. Oh, I queued up the wrong. Hold on. like this. I queued up the wrong photos. I was like, "What are y'all talking about?" My bad. I queued up the wrong photos. <laughs> I take that back. <laughs> no, I'm not drunk. I'm a little sleepy, but I'm not drunk. My bad. My bad. My bad. I'm going to take them out. <laughs> I'm going to take them out. You feel me with the blonde hair and stuff like that? It's going to get crazy in the party now. You know? see yet. <laughs> I've seen it too many times. When the white guys come in like they was on a vampire movie, bro. Hella jail, spikes sticking up, a, brown, a bunch of black dudes. Yeah, somebody's going to get their cakes touched on, bro. Uh... Y'all, y'all gonna stop trolling me. Um, I'll take them out. Tina, thank you so much for joining the membership. We got like 4,200 in the chat. And we're not even done yet. Let's get into Wendy. <laughs> okay, so one thing that I was trying to research that I had a couple of issues getting into with Wendy was Divorce records in New Jersey are extremely hard to get. It's not like Georgia or, you know, New York. I can even, Jersey, they require you to actually be in person to get the records. And a lot of them are sealed. So <laughs> I'm not drunk. I wish I was tipsy. Um, But anyway. I couldn't get them. But one thing that I really wanted to get into with those divorce records was the fact that Wendy was overpaying. So when I saw this, I felt like I don't have to say allegedly in this situation. It says, not so fast. Wendy Williams Guardian demands Kevin Hunter pay back $112,000 in overpaid divorce settlements in wake of him asking for more money. Claims Wendy paid him too much in split. 
Um, it says, remember a few weeks ago, we reported about Wendy Williams' ex-husband, Kevin Hunter, demanding her estate pay him extra coins because he's been struggling since not receiving his monthly check from Wendy. Y'all, he then gained the weight back. Allegedly, he then lost his house. Excuse me. And allegedly, he then lost his girl. Wendy is getting the last laugh. Wendy is definitely getting the last laugh in this situation. She had, she no longer has to pay him, at least for the time being. He's claiming that his health has deteriorated. It is what it is. If you were such a good manager, why weren't you actually managing um, anyone else after Wendy? Nobody said you got blacklisted. Why would you still be in Rolls Royce trucks and your wife, baby mama, fiance um, has the ability to basically do nothing? No offense to her, but I think she was a natural food person at one point in real estate. Another point. Basically, they did nothing and they were living off Wendy. Well, when Wendy stopped working, I would think that you would understand that the money is going to slow down. But they start, they kept living high on the hog. And now this is what you get. Um, it says, well, now Wendy's guardian, Sabrina Morrissey, is coming back strong and demanding that Kevin actually pay back some of the money he received in the divorce settlement. According to the documents obtained by the U.S. Sun, Morrissey claims Wendy overpaid Kevin. In Kevin's initial lawsuit against her estate, he claimed he and Wendy had an agreement that she should pay him a specific amount of money a month after their divorce, but she stopped the payment shortly before her guardianship started. Now, well, she didn't stop the payments. Her accounts were frozen. It wasn't like she did it on purpose or she actually was in any form of control over that. And we still don't technically know what started the conservatorship. It could have very well been these payments to Kevin. And now Morrissey says the agreement actually says the severance payments were to end if Wendy's annual income dropped below a certain amount, which it did after she was done hosting her talk show. She continued to pay Mr. Hunter. He says in his motion papers that he was paid through January of 2022, Morrissey wrote. As a result, Kevin has been unjustly enriched by the receipt of $112,500 belonging to Wendy. Morrissey is asking that all of the 112 be returned to Wendy ASAP, but he don't have any money. He has absolutely no money. So where would the money come from? <laughs> Where would the money come from? Brother who can't manage his money. <laughs> <laughs> um, now that he has been in the blogs, Kevin has decided to talk about Black China. Viewers and, and, and women on my page are going to be very mad. But for the smart people, for the smart people who understand the plight of, I'm not trying to play victim. Again, I take full accountability. A lot of y'all still don't know what's going on, and you still won't know what's going on. And as per the documentary that you just saw, which was whatever, I knew nothing about it, you still don't know what's going on. And guess what? There was nothing good that came out of that. Nothing good came out of the documentary. So I don't know what was this display for. All of the people that were involved, the celebrities, half of them were involved in enabling her. So Black China, you need to go sit down before I air you out, let you know, let people know what you really did. There's a lot of, there's a lot, but I'm not here for that. Listen, you miserable women, please stay off my. The women are miserable. The women are miserable. <laughs> it's nothing more evil than a broke ass man. <laughs> I told y'all, Brenda was going to be all up and through this video. My page. Just could stay off my page. Pray for the people that's involved. Pray for my ex-wife. Pray for Wendy Williams. Hunter. Pray for Wendy Williams. Pray that for the family. Pray for everybody that's involved. And whatever I'm out here doing and whatever people think I'm doing, guess what? If I don't go out here and do it, who the fuck is going to do What are we going to do? We're going to just let everybody, whatever the display is, whoever's in charge, they clearly don't care. So, And, I, and I've been minding my business. I've been doing what I got to do to make these announcements that I'm about to make to show that I am working hard. I'm going to keep working. My legacy is not over. Whatever I have to do for the legacy that still includes my entire family is still not over. My son is looking. My daughter's looking. 
My lady is looking. Everybody's looking now. So at this point, you know, if you don't really care, if you still caught up on that nigga, nigga, nigga armatry or that nigga news about whatever, you don't really see what's going on here, the real plight, then okay. The plight is you broke. <laughs> That's the plight. It's nothing more evil than a broke ass man. But please, I'm going to ask you to please refrain, you women, refrain from my comments, refrain, go get a life, go get a man, go get some penis, go do whatever you need to do. But please stop worrying about Kelvin. All of you miserable hearers and, and, and women <laughs> on my page. <laughs> See, after he gained the weight back and lost the money, <laughs> are y'all hitting him up in his DMs? He'll be very mad. But for the smart people, for the smart people who understand the plight of, I'm not trying to play victim. Again, I take full accountability. A lot of y'all still don't know what's going on, and you still won't know what's going on. And as per the documentary that you just saw, which was whatever, I knew nothing about it, you still don't know what's going on. And guess what? There was nothing good that came out of that. Nothing good came out of the documentary. So I don't know what was this display for. All of the people that were involved, the celebrities, half of them were involved in enabling her. So Black China, you need to go sit down before I air you out and let, you know, let people know what you really did. There's a lot of, there's a lot, but I'm not here for that. Listen, you miserable women, please stay off my page. Just could stay off my page. Pray for the people that's involved. Pray for my ex-wife. Pray for Wendy Williams. Hunter. Pray for Wendy Williams. Pray that for the family. Pray for everybody that's involved. And whatever I'm out here doing and whatever people think I'm doing, guess what? If I don't go out here and do it, who the fuck is going to do What are we going to do? We're going to just let... He mad, y'all. He mad because he got to cough up $112,000 that he doesn't have. Um, Stacy, thank you so much for joining the membership. Uh, Luciana, Wendy did not pay alimony. They agreed to pay severance because this could go through the business account and not our personal bank account. This amount is based on income and reviewed every year. Thank you, Luciana. I appreciate that. Luciana is a straight shooter with her ears to the streets, apparently. Um, so a straight shooter, pow pow. <laughs> and is anybody interested in Kellen? Already, apparently, y'all all in his comments and DMs. Kelvin thought he was set for life. Exactly. Exactly. What happened to the natural food chef? <laughs> when he said he was, <laughs> that took me out. So I already changed the um, title of this video and I changed the thumbnail. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do an apology to Dwayne Wade. <laughs> Uh, Negla says, no one is thinking about Kevin. You go away. Now, y'all, we got a success story in Shirley Strawberry. So a lot of you guys probably don't really follow what was going on with Shirley Strawberry. I was following it for a while. I still watch some of the phone calls from prison. But basically, Shirley Strawberry um, from the Steve Harvey radio show, who does a strawberry letter, married a charlatan. Uh, his charges included... Um, we're gonna let's see. Okay, Gun, uh, pow pow possession, theft, fraud, and child videos. Um, it's been I would say almost a year now of us following, or if it's not a full year, close to a full year of us following the story. It was pretty crazy. Um, nobody was more excited about this story than Steve Harvey, because right before this started popping off, Steve Harvey was all over the blogs with Lady Heroin, his wife. That was all we heard about. Then it became Shirley and Nesta. We found out that they don't have good money management skills. Shirley was in love with the limelight, but she had no idea who she actually got married to. They were multiple evictions, um, and they were basically living less than check to check. His fraudulent alleged business partner was living next door. Um, then we found out that he was having conversations with this lady quite often who she says that she is not his boo, but 
they've talked about her titties through prison phone calls and all kinds of other things that don't feel appropriate for a married man to be speaking with another woman about. Well, Shirley has filed for divorce. Um, shout out to Pam Esquire. She was the first person that I know who broke this story. She's actually been going to the courtroom to look at the bond hearings and everything. Pam has really been on it. So shout out to her. She is one of my YouTube buddies. If you don't know, I want you guys to listen. On top of the fraud and everything, what I think is worse is these allegations. And Pam is about to read them. I appreciate it. So let's get into what the pictures, what they're alleging the pictures have on them. Y'all ready for this? The first one was stamped as 000012. It was an 11 to 13 year old giving oral sex on a dog while holding the dog's penis in one hand. The second pick was 000019. They believed the person was between 12 and 14. They were on their knees. They had heavy makeup on. And basically, there was a dog in the picture, and the dog was being instructed by somebody. The reason this case picked up so much steam wasn't just that fact that it was Shirley Strawberry's husband who had all these photos with celebrities. It was that in the um, when he was picked up, when he was before the judge, the judge ordered that he was not allowed to be around any children. He was not allowed to be around his wife, and he was not allowed to be around any animals. So that's really what piqued people's interest. Like, what do you mean he can't be around animals? Well, this is why. This is what they were alleging they found on Shirley Strawberry's husband's computer. To do things to the young girl's genitalia. So there was some adult male in there trying to tell them to do things to the genitalia. Then they had the third pick was 00029. It was between 14 and 16. And they said it was a juvenile whose legs were spread wide open, which was showing her genitalia. She had on a crop top. And they said the juvenile was given oral to an animal that they believed to be a dog. So they're not sure if it was. We're not going to go through the rest of the photos. But for those of you guys who did not know, this is what Shirley Strawberry was dealing with, with who is now deemed Nasty Nesto. Um, it's important to say that Nesto has denied all allegations. Him and his special friend, who's not Shirley Strawberry, talk on the phone all the time about how the charges are bogus and bullshit. Um, not only did they find the computer with these images, I think there was one of those masks, like, um, I guess you would call it like a dominatrix mask where it like zips at the mouth and stuff like that and adult toys all in a bag. What it sounds like to me was Nasty Nesto had things that he could not have his wife see. So he would carry those things with him everywhere he went. Nesto has alleged that that computer was something that he bought secondhand and those images would have been on it from there. You know, I always try to give you all both sides, but Shirley Strawberry has officially, after this long drawn out stint where we've all heard all the prison phone calls, filed for divorce from this nasty mother and it could not have come any sooner i was waiting on this um if you haven't followed this case because it's really really crazy um other content creators have alleged that their marriage isn't even legitimate because nesto was married to um some woman in the 80s and allegedly never got a divorce there Somebody else came forward and said she was married to Nesto. So I'm not sure why Shirley is seeking a divorce and not an annulment. But Shirley is a woman of a certain age who has done very well for herself. Um, she is on the Steve Harvey show. They have renewed her for the next few years. So hopefully she smartly takes the money that she makes in these next couple of years, doesn't try to live the high life, and figures out what her next steps are probably for retirement. Um, I told y'all this was going to get messy. I warned y'all this was some crazy shit. This was, <laughs> this was a lot. I know y'all hear me say that a lot. And, you know, my bad, Dwayne Wade. I did my, I did my picks and stuff for this video, like right before the video. So my bad. I'll also put it in the 
in the chat. Um, Tinderoni says, I don't think it was legitimate. I was watching the Tasha K interview. Apparently, they were not legally married. Yeah, but I don't know why she's filing for divorce and not an annulment if it wasn't. Guys, we have almost 5,000 in the chat. Definitely hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Um, he probably completely had her fooled. I'm sure he had a lot of people fooled. There was a lot of celebrities around him and everything else because of his, you know, the car rental stuff that he was doing and his barbershop. But, you know, having that kind of stuff on your laptop is nasty work. That's some nasty work, y'all. Um, We got more stories and stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and let y'all have a good Friday night. Thank you guys for being here. Um, I'll, I've already, like I said, changed the title of this video and took <laughs> Dwayne Wade out of the thumbnail. Thank you guys for pointing it out. Thank you guys for keeping me honest. Um, <laughs> and yeah, let's get those likes up. See y'all maybe tomorrow if some other stuff pops off. If not, y'all have a good weekend. But I'm, I'm sure I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs>